filming. You're a bibliophile, a lover of books. But we know in the modern age that books are kind of passe. Everything we're going to need to read is, can be found on screens or will shortly be found on screens. So the question is simple. Why books? Well, I'm hoping that there will be something like a, a backlash against virtual reality. <laughs> Um, and I, I really believe it, that the physical book is part of the act of creation, part of the author's uh, design. When, uh, when Jane Austen writes uh, you know, Pride and Prejudice, she um, has a book in mind. Ah, so it's, so the, the form and the format are complementary. I think the materiality is an inescapable part of the, uh, the whole artistic product, right? And to deal with it just as a text, just as a series of, of, of words on a screen uh, is to uh, lose something of the truly human act of creation. When I sit here, this is a second edition of, of Pride and Prejudice, and when I open it, I mean, it's a, it's a mysterious kind of experience um, to sit there and read the book that Austen would have had, could have had in her own hands, and you know, maybe 500 of her contemporaries had sure. in their hands. Um, and this idea of having a physical library in Austen's time you know, was part of what it meant to be educated. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So, but what I'm hearing, this is this, I love the irony here, right? So we're in an age where we all know, we've all been told that the problem with America these days is materialism. And here you are, uh, right. right, advocating Good mater mater I'm <laughs> materialism. I'm advocating healthy materialism. I'm, so, uh, the so, right, so I'm, how does that work? Well, careful materialism, I think, is actually something that looks at objects not as something we just you know, use up and throw away, mm -hmm. but that we invest with meaning. Okay. You know, I mean, it goes back to the sort of material uh, reality of something like a relic in the Middle Ages. I think I see, that yes. kind of, it's a mysterious kind of uh, spiritual value invested in something physical. And we don't really do that anymore. That's what I would call a kind of, uh, you know, a serious, uh, a good materialism. We have the kind of, uh, you know, the, the wasteful materialism, consumerism. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so you would say that, that if I read um, the same text, the same words in a book, it's a different experience. Well, I think it is. Um, I mean, if you, for example, want to compare, um, this, here's a, you know, here's my, my smartphone, and I've, I've got loaded up here um, a, um, a text from, from Paradise Lost. Uh, right. You know, there's the invocation to book three of Paradise Lost. Right. That's one kind of reading. That's a certain kind of experience. I think that's a transitory experience. It's one where the reader can turn it off, uh, can shuffle it, can, can uh, stop attending very quickly, you know, can multitask, that sort of thing. Sure. I compare that with what I do when I teach. This is my, this is one of my course textbooks. Right. And this is a heavily annotated, you know, dense uh, te course textbook. You know, and that's, uh, I, I told my class I would rather have my car stolen than have this book stolen. Now, now can't you scroll on the margins of a Kindle? I don't have a Kindle. Well, but, yeah. but they tell me you can scroll. On you the can margin. certainly, you have to be able to scroll or you could never fit the no, whole no, text I mean, in the window. Scroll. Oh, scroll. Scroll, yeah. Oh, well, I gather. But it's an ephemeral kind of, of, of annotation. You know, yeah, the annotations we've got in books that are hundreds of years old are, are a record, an intellectual record of the reader. You know, and those I don't think are going to be there. I don't think your Kindle notes are going to be there 200 years from <laughs> Somehow. now. Somehow. Uh, but by contrast, then there's the final form of reading. I'm working sure. backwards through time. Um, this is the first illustrated. Okay, so we had your, we had your, your smartphone, the college text. Correct. Right. And now here is the first illustrated edition of Paradise Lost. Now, the fact that it's illustrated is interesting because a modern reader would open this page and instantly focus on the image. Oh, yeah, right, right. I yeah, mean, that's we, what we my are, sure. yeah, we're, we're, an, uh, we're, a, we're a society that just is uh, fascinated by uh, iconography, by the, by the thing itself in front of our eyes. And it's not what goes through the eyes so much. I mean, here, this is, where, this is what's really fascinating. Hail, holy light, offspring of heaven, firstborn, or of the eternal, co-eternal beam, May I express thee unblamed. Now, you could read that on a Kindle, Kindle. <laughs> or you could read it here. And I mean, perhaps the reading is similar, but there's a kind of memorability that goes with this. There's a kind of, you know, you can, you, you'll be able, if you read it here in this edition, you mm -hmm. would come back to it and you would picture those words on the page and you would anchor your experience in time and space. So what, in a sense, what is it? Can we put our finger on literally, or yeah, <laughs> literally or figuratively? Can we put our finger on what it is about 
the book that is worthy of persisting into the 21st, 22nd, 23rd century? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of a circular argument, I agree. I think um, the fact that I think people have invested their books with value uh, continues to give them value, to me at mm. least. Mm -hmm. um, there's this famous uh, passage in, Paradox, er, in uh, Pride and Prejudice. Uh, I am astonished, Miss Bingley says, that my father should have left so small a collection of books. <laughs> what a delightful library you have at Pemberley, Mr. Darcy. And Darcy, you remember, turns to her right. and says, it ought to be good. He replied, it has been the work of many generations. Uh, uh, so you don't think word files? <laughs> no, I don't think that's the work of many generations. It's <laughs> going to be the work of many generations. Yeah. But, but I th I'm sure that reading can adapt to new technologies. Uh, I'm just not sure that the attention and the kind of reading, I'm just not sure that we sustain our attention when we read on a, on a, in a modern technology the way we do if we have a book. The book is a formal uh, embodiment of, of, of uh, completeness, of integrity. And there's, you know, when you're scrolling through a text, there's no symbolic representation of that integrity. You've got just what you show. You're dealing with morsels, bits. Right. You Literally know, bits. And yeah, yeah, and you're just, and you're yes. just browsing. And, and so do you think there's, how to put this, is there an aesthetic overlap or some sort of a tendency for us to write more beautifully and to attend to the beauty of the written word when it's the written word? When it comes off a pen at the end of your hand? Right. Versus when it comes off a keyboard on, onto a screen. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I, I know the way I write uh, mm -hmm. with a pen is more reflective, and more, uh, uh, it's more cautious, uh, you know, it's more uh, self-analytical. Uh, self uh, you know, with a, with a computer, I tend to rely upon conventions more. I mean, what do you do, I mean, when you write with a computer? Well, of course, you're writing faster, you're cutting and pasting. That's right. Um, your, yeah. your, your, speed of, your speed of thought is, 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 is vastly accelerated because it's so easy to fix it. I'll Absolutely. go back and fix it. I'll it's what back. Matthew Arnold said about journalism. It's, it's literature in a hurry. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I think maybe the place to finish, though, is, is not with your thoughts and not with my thoughts, but the ah. thoughts of a Nobel laureate. I like Czeslaw Milos. And ah. we will read the ending of one of his uh, little poems, And Yet the Books. And Yet the Books. Right. I imagine the earth when I am no more. Nothing happens, no loss. It's still a strange pageant. Women's dresses, dewy lilacs, a song in the valley. Yet the books will be there on the shelves, well-born, derived from people, but also from radiance, heights. Maybe that's the key. I don't think that I could sigh to a Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time, Thanks, Eric. Jeff. I really right. appreciate Good. it. Yep. <laughs>